Hi guys, welcome to Antique Sprinklers. Today we're talking about one of my favorite lines of sprinklers and favorite styles of sprinklers. <clears throat> These are the ball drive uh, sprinklers from Rainomat. And uh, before we get into uh, the sprinklers, I want to talk a little bit about Rainomat. Uh, it was founded by a guy named uh, Elmer Reynolds Jr. and he'd been born in Los Angeles in uh, 1922 and by uh, about 1950 he was working as a uh, what we would call an irrigation consultant today but he referred to himself as I think in one city directory a sprinkler draftsman that kind of thing but he had clients and he designed irrigation systems for them and uh, you know he saw an opportunity in some of the challenges they were having uh, with the irrigation technology of the day and in the mid 1950s developed a, uh, a ball drive sprinkler that uh, that he patented and, um, you know, he did very well. He, uh, within 10 years, had gone from his little 35 by 35 foot building in which he did his drafting and, and a little bit of manufacturing into a 10,000 square foot warehouse. He, uh, he was involved in many different um, uh, lines of irrigation from residential through commercial into sports turf and uh, golf courses. Uh, and uh, I'm going to put on the screen some of the some of the bigger projects that he had in the, in the Los Angeles area and out in Palm Desert, uh, like Seven Lakes and some of the others, uh, the names don't spring so closely to mind. Uh, maybe a large park that he did was Rose Hill Memorial, I believe there, kind of near Pasadena, Whittier area. And that's where they were actually located is Whittier, not LA, though in uh, at least the early days of the company, they put LA on all of their uh, sprinklers in their uh, brass molds and their bronze molds. And so like, most folks uh, born uh, in 1925 and before, uh, Elmer uh, may exposed himself to the draft, registered, uh, I believe he learned to fly uh, in what would have been the Army Air Corps, and uh, he continued that passion for the rest of his life. His uh, sprinkler company, I would say, was prosperous. Uh, there's certainly a lot of Rainomat sprinklers out there. He called his golf line at least the Pelican uh, line of sprinklers, and uh, you could find uh, their advertisements in uh, golf course management magazines in the 50s and 60s, uh, maybe into the early 1970s. And uh, the uh, company lasted into the late 80s. Um, unfortunately, Elmer died around 2005 after a lengthy battle with Alzheimer's. But at least among collectors, and I'm sure, given the simple nature of these sprinklers, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute here, there are some of these still out there, uh, dutifully every other morning, watering some turf grass. So when we talk about the sprinklers, you know, to me, nothing says LA in the 50s and, and 60s like this design. You know, it's very mid-century modern, I think. It's very minimalist in its lines. It does have some swooping curves to it. Uh, it looks like a little bronze mushroom uh, and, uh, you know, if you think about LA of that era, it's the Rat Pack, it's, you know, Eames furniture, it's mid-century modern houses and convertibles. And, you know, it's really, I think, maybe the height of, height of their chic culture out there. And, uh, and I feel like this sprinkler, uh, both in its uh, elegance and its simplicity, because that mid-century, you know, uh, aesthetic was kind of one of minimalism where you had, you know, more open space inside of homes and things like that. And, you know, kitchens that blended into family rooms and that sort of thing for the first time ever really in our history. And so the beautiful simplicity, and I'll show it, hopefully I'll show it on this. Uh, and I'll put the patent up again that uh, Elmer got for these things. And so basically the top just unthreads from the body and it's a single cast piece here with threads on it. And uh, if that's not visible in the video when I edit it, I'll uh, go ahead and take some closer pictures. And uh, this is an early guy because it says patent pending on it. So I'm guessing this one's from the 1950s. And there's really only two moving parts. You have this center spindle and it's made out of uh, yellow brass and it has a, an orifice in one side and then this slit in the back end that creates kind of the rooster tail. And then there is a, uh, and I'm not sure how easy that is to see, but it's very obvious in the, um, in the patent and in some other pictures from advertising that I have. You have a spring that's coiled around tightly against the body on the inside, and that's what this ball travels up. And this is just a stainless steel ball bearing. And what that stainless steel ball bearing hits is this little bump out on the bottom of the spindle, and that's what makes the whole thing turn. This, the ball bearing itself starts traveling because of a vein in the bottom of these things. And that is essentially it. Very, very simple, two moving parts, all to last forever. 
no reason these things should wear out. And they distribute water really pretty, uh, really beautifully, uh, which you'll see as soon as we I get out of the way and we start uh, looking at these guys in action. The bigger models, well, all of them could have a rubber cover on them. They made a 7, a 9, 11, and a 12. And I read where they were coming out with an inch and a quarter version. The, the 11 and 12 are one inch. Uh, I have never seen one, and I haven't seen it in a, in a catalog. The newest I have is uh, 1971. And um, they all would accept a rubber cover, as I mentioned, but you can see in the top of uh, this number 11, the uh, pre-drilled and tapped screws, uh, screw holes for, uh, for a rubber cover that would go over the top of it. You'd screw right down on top of it. And that's what made this safe to put on, say, uh, a football field. And I think, especially in the LA area, a number of them were used that way. Uh, we had a few out east here, but Rainomat was never quite the same thing. There was a guy who installed Rainomat systems up in central Pennsylvania, did a ton of advertising, like in the Carlisle area, I know, in the 1950s and 60s. But uh, otherwise, I haven't seen a whole lot of evidence of them having a big market share out here, other than to say uh, they did irrigate the uh, lawn at the, at the White House. And uh, there's some symmetry there because Seven Lakes, which I mentioned earlier, uh, was a course that uh, Dwight Eisenhower played on when he was on vacation. Uh, Ike was a, uh, a real big, uh, big golfer back in the day. So all the way up the line, these uh, sprinklers operate the same way, just with bigger parts. And so uh, you can hear, you can hear <laughs> there's a ball down in there and you've got the uh, yellow brass um, spindle and then the bronze casing. And there's a spring around the inside of this one, just like this guy here. And they operate uh, really well. Um, not a super fast rotating sprinkler. And um, you'll be able to tell that this K, and I do have uh, a cheat sheet here. So uh, the model K, and I want it out of this guy because this gives me the individual nozzle sizes and what they do. And, um, and actually I do know what that, that larger one was. That inch and a quarter inlet was the 21. And uh, it was good for a, a diameter of like uh, 150 foot. You could, uh, you could triangularly space these guys uh, about 90 feet. Um, and uh, for, the, for the 11 here, you really wanted to be more in that 60 foot, um, 50 to 60 foot triangular spacing. So this has a K nozzle on it. And the K was, uh, uh, let's see, or what their optimum pressure was. It, they would get uh, uh, 100 feet at about 60 PSI. And it was putting out in the neighborhood of about 15 gallons a minute. And you'll be able to see that uh, I am stretching my water supply here to run this thing. But you still see the pattern. You still see it, it rotates. You see a good idea, a good example uh, of how the thing works anyhow. And this little guy, this uh, number seven here, uh, fits much more easily in, inside the uh, constraints I've, I'm dealing with here. And that thing, whoops, I got to go back over here. That thing, the 7F here was... Um, capable of a, a, about a uh, 60 foot diameter. So it's kind of that 30 foot rotor that you'd expect. Uh, and it puts out around two and a half gallons, 2.7 gallons a minute. And uh, your maximum triangular spacing there that you're gonna wanna do is about 35 feet on these things. So fairly standard for a rotor of the day, you know, and even today, you know, 30, 35 feet is what that small uh, individual rotor is gonna be operating best at in a lot of yards. Um, although gosh, low profile for what you get, right? Look how tiny that thing is. And think about even just, you know, back what it was competing with once you got into the 60s and 70s, you know, like a 15 111 that had a lid on it that big around and was that tall. And, uh, you know, that, that sure would be a lot easier to deal with. Um, but again, not quite as, um, as uh, infinitely adjustable, even though the impacts weren't infinitely adjustable, they came closer. You, you would have to pick a part of a circle that you wanted with these things and then hope it fit what you needed, uh, which is probably the biggest drawback, I'd say. Um, certainly, they were less self-damaging than an impact rotor, um, less complex than a gear drive, and more compact, really even, gosh, you know, Weathermatic made a really tiny jet rotor that was about this tall, but bigger around on top. So. Uh, so it might be the most compact sprinkler kind of in that size. If, if you can uh, offer up a challenger to that, leave, let me know in the comments. So for the introduction today, that's uh, what I have to say about Elmer Reynolds Jr. and uh, Rainomat of Whittier, California and their full circle ball drives. At some point in the future, hopefully not too far out, 
I'll, uh, I'll highlight some of the low angle ball drives I have and some of the part circles. Uh, I think they're, they're really interesting to watch. And in the very low tech way they made a part circle is really interesting to me, but also an incredibly effective way to do it. So uh, if you have any experience with these sprinklers, let me know. Uh, if you uh, have evidence as to uh, why they might be less than desirable other than the cost of manufacture, which I'm certain is uh, you know, the number one challenge when you're making something of quality out of bronze and brass and stainless steel, uh, also leave that in the credits. And the last thing I'd say is, if you like the content, go ahead and hit the thumbs up so that more folks who enjoy this kind of thing will be shown the video by YouTube. Uh, and as always, I really appreciate that anybody watches, let alone comments. I, it's, uh, it's a lot more of you than I ever expected. So thanks for watching.